found the one that he was referring to. Right, that's what I mean. Because it was right up to the ground. No one was attacking him. What's the most embarrassing thing you can do? Many would say it's being naked in front of strangers, but just off the top of my head I know at least one thing that's more embarrassing than being naked in front of strangers, and that's undressing in front of strangers with cameras. And no, this isn't an announcement of my OnlyFans page because my wife will literally kill me just for making the joke. This is the start of my journey into vanity. On the 15th of September 2023, I started my probably most insane project yet. Suffering from bipolar type 2 disorder with long depressions and short hypomanic episodes, there's been a touch of crazy in many of my projects, and the last few years of trying to manage my bipolar with exercise is no exception. When the world was locked down with Covid, I exercised daily for three years. Yeah, there were ups and downs, but I was more stable than ever before in my life. And I didn't even contract COVID. Then, after months of increasing pressure, last fall, depression came with full force. And I stopped training. The deep dark lasted almost a year and trying to exercise my way out of it became too difficult because for my depression, bad health is a bonus. Aches and pain and hunger is a bonus. Stuffing my face with caramel and shame is a bonus. Not sleeping, sleeping too long, feeling the fatigue, the migraines. All of it is a bonus for my depression. My depression wants to kill me, and if it can't do it quick, it'll sure enjoy watching it happen slowly. But obsessing about everything negative also had some benefits, because sometimes the negatives my depression points out are both real and opportunities. Willfully damaging my health is a problem, but enjoying watching myself suffer is an opportunity, because good or bad, I do enjoy watching myself. And that's when it hit me. Even in my darkest hour, I'm still vain. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, says the Bible, and for me, my own vanity has always been a source of shame. So what if, instead of being ashamed of my obsession with myself, I embrace it for full? What if I were to dedicate my life full-time to bodybuilding, that oh-so-most-sickingly vain confluence of sports and arts? To train for the pain and not against it. For nine months, carry forth a new Kim and document my progress, not by mere selfies and measurements, but by masterful oil paintings. And then turn the whole thing into a series of videos delving into all the topics surrounding health and mental health and body image and superheroes and mythology and capitalism and the forced separation of body and mind. I contacted some of my most talented friends, ex-bodybuilder Christian Instefjord to help with the training, painter Nicolas O'Leary to paint the progress, and photographer Francisco Munoz to film and photograph the painting sessions. The game was on. Times in a row. You start, to lose a bit of you start to lose a bit of motivation. The theme of the first painting session was determination, and the simple beauty of the human body in all its sizes. It was about documenting my starting point for this journey with grace and dignity. I'm not leaving behind this current incarnation of flesh because chubby dad bods are worth less. I'm doing this because change is fascinatingly beautiful. And in the process, I'm learning how much it hurts to hold your hand in place in the wrong position. I feel like a wrestler now. Yeah. <laughs>
The first month, life, work and family kept intervening, but I forced up my exercise and general activity and it went beyond all my expectations. I got a clarity of thought and I envisioned a pyramid of exercise philosophy to guide my sessions. To be in the moment when thoughts start to fly, gently direct them back to the breath. To move with intent, always push the weight securely and with a goal in mind. And the gym is a social place, leave it tighter than you entered it. I applied this philosophy to my daily life as well. Be in the moment with my family and not stress about everything else. Move with intent and if that means I have to take two turns up the stairs with the groceries, then the second trip is a bonus. Be social, goddammit! I felt renewed, reinvigorated, I felt like I could do anything, I felt wide awake with only a few hours of sleep. I didn't realize I already knew this feeling. This was the feeling of a hypomanic episode. Panicked, I contacted my psychiatrist, lowered my dose of antidepressants, and prepared for the worst. But then, the hypomania was already waning. And as my mind became cluttered with a post-hypomanic cacophony of negative thoughts, I realized I might have actually exercised my way th past the episode. My program to keep myself stable worked. But after the hypomania comes depression. I braced myself, but it was just too much. Too much work, too much familial problems, too many thoughts. On October the 15th, one month after starting, I was about to give up. On October the 16th, I awoke with COVID. COVID was a haze. I was still drawing, still streaming, still trying to homeschool one of my kids. It wasn't that bad, it just wouldn't let go. After two weeks, I felt well enough to go on a mountain walk with Christian. That was a mistake. After the walk, I collapsed on the sofa, shivering with migraine. This was it. This is how it ends. I'm trying to claw on, desperately keep my grip, but there is no fire anymore, only darkness. I keep postponing everything, but deep inside I already know, I know I have given up. And then, on the 10th of November, almost two months into the project, I postponed going for another shorter mountain walk until the sun goes down and it's too late. But I fetch a headlight and go. There in the woods, I turn out the lights. There's something nearby, a creature, a deer, there in the darkness it hits me. I have already given up, because giving up alone is easy. Sure, I, I had conned Christian and Francisco and Nick into this insane project that had to fail, but the damage was still relatively limited. But I actually have the privilege of not being alone. I have all of you, all of you strangers around the world. And what's the most embarrassing thing you can do? It's not being naked or undressing or being laughed at or failing in front of your friends. It's failing in front of the world. And that's why I have to give up, raise the stakes and begin again. And if I fail this time, it'll be for all your entertainment. All this vanity and vexation of spirit.